house on a floating dock can be a challenge in a number of ways, not the least of which is the endless pursuit of keeping it level. Even with a near perfectly executed build, no matter what, over time the dock is going to warp slightly in areas of stress, as of course water does not push back to support these areas in the same way solid ground would. In a perfect world where money isn't an object, the easiest way to combat this struggle is by building the foundational dock frame out of steel, which is far less prone to bending or warping than wood. But ain't nobody got that kind of money laying around, or at least we don't. So for most folks like us, a wood frame dock is still perfectly fine, as long as you know how to continue leveling the house as time goes on. And by the way, when we talk about weight putting stress on an area, we aren't really referring to the weight of things like furniture. The things you put inside your house for the most part are much less significant in terms of weight than the actual building materials of the structure itself. The tongue and groove for our loft floor in the back of the house, for example, helps counteract the heavier weight from the taller walls in the front of the house. So anyways, when you notice one area or one side of the house starting to sit up higher than the other side, there are two ways to combat this. You can either pick up the lower side or weigh down the higher side. Weighing down the higher side is far, far cheaper, if not free, but ultimately your choice will be made for you by how much buoyancy you have in your floats. We spend a little extra money on very tall and therefore very buoyant floats for our house. So in our case, we can easily weigh down an area with less weight by adding rocks or concrete bags on top of the floats or hanging a bucket of concrete off the side. But if you skimped on floats to begin with and have a house that's sitting pretty close to the water as is, obviously you don't wanna be weighing it down further. In this case, your cheapest option still is gonna run you about a grand to buy a lift float, which is basically like the floating version of a jack to lift back up the lower side. So long story short, it's not the end of the world if your floating house isn't perfectly level, but having invested in good tall floats on the front end or even a steel frame dock if you can afford it, will end up making it much easier and cheaper to maintain the levelness of your home, amongst other things, in the long run. Which is exactly what we find ourselves doing at the start of this week. For most folks, it would be hard to tell that our house isn't perfectly level, but Brandon's eye for detail when it comes to that kind of thing recently noticed that our propane bottles seem to be leaning slightly, indicating a slight bow in the dock. I'm talking a half inch, an inch tops. Nothing to write home about, but these things start small and they become harder and more expensive to fix as time goes on. So we went ahead and tackled it. See, that's 28. For 27 and a half, that side's 28, so now the house is only a half inch off. How much are these? Almost 800 pounds. No, how much money? 60 bucks. A piece? No, oh, total. Oh, nice. 29 inches. 29 inches. All the money. Nice. Let it sit for two or three months and then we'll finalize it. That wasn't so bad, was it? No. What do you think? That definitely looks a better time than better. Good. This sound is, it was definitely one of the things that we were looking forward to most about moving here in this spot and has not disappointed. One thing that we didn't anticipate about it is that, you know, throughout the rest of the harbor, you can hear a little bit of road noise from Highway 28 up there. And even though we're actually on the side of the harbor closer to the road, this completely drowns it out. This is like the only spot in the harbor that you can't hear any cars, so love that. By the way, if you're new with us and curious after seeing us weigh down our docks today, how the lifting up process would work, I'll add a couple links in the description to past videos where we've added lift floats to other houses. But since there are no lift floats needed for our house, it's on to other projects we go. This place is a mess. Me 
Fun to have an island. And the oven will be in the island and then it'll have butcher block around it. Nice. You crazy bear. Alright, now do this. 44 inches off the front of that cabinet under the kitchen window. Come out into the room 44 inches. That's how much you need before you start that stove. So the stove door can open. You can still buy, you can still open your cabinet doors and you got a pathway. You see what I'm saying? Are you saying that 48 inches is the bar stool side of this? No, that 48 inches is the front of the stove sitting there. Come back towards the living room about 39 inches and build that box on the floor. You you gotta have a stove sitting back in there, a cabinet on each side of it, and then a 12 inch opening for the people to put their bar stools on. If it'll work, it'll be really useful for whoever buys that one. You'll have 14 inches yeah. on both sides of the oven. That'll be a 12 inch cabinet on one side, a 12 inch cabinet on the other side, and plenty of room to slide your stove in there. Now do this. See at the back of that box facing the living room? Take a piece of tape yeah. and tape in 12 inches all the way across. For your bar stools? Well, I'm out of tape. Well, these uh, these blocks are 12 inches each. Yeah, the blocks are 12. The tiles. So pretty inches. much your bar stools would be here where my feet are. Under that 12 inches right there. Yeah, and you can see straight yeah. out that window. So you might be able to tell we're making this a very similar layout to our house minus the loft, with the exception of having two bedrooms. Because we've really found our layout to, to work really well, to be super practical and the best use of space and, and the best way to make it feel really open. But one thing that's really exciting here is okay. the addition of an island because there is a little more space than what we have. Having that yeah. extra counter space plus bar stools and an actual you know kitchen seating like that will be so awesome so we got to think about where the floats are under the house in terms of planning for where this island is going to go as well because the gas line that runs under here up to the stove has to be able to fit between the open area where the floats are what does it look like baby well that float is huh? pretty much here so anywhere in that part in the back where we need it, that's where that gas line, it'll go down, over. One of us is gonna have to get in the water to run that line. I have a feeling it's gonna be me. If you saw our New Year's polar plunge last year, I think you already know why. Oh, I gotta start rolling. Wow, this, I'm feeling really good. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Oh my god! It's horrible. I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> I 
5.45 a.m., 24 degrees, <laughs> heading to work. I think they forgot to put this in those Discover Boating magazines. I will say one um, life hack in that regard. I had a, uh, the remote start function installed on my car a couple years ago. Life safe. That's just one of those unnecessary bougie quality of life boosts that I could not do without me. <laughs> After a really cold boat ride getting into a decently warm car. Uh, This right here is an issue. <laughs> Our back line that comes out here is rubbing against this rock, which of course is going to chafe it over time and damage its structural integrity. So, we've got some fire hose. Um, Brandon's cut it down the middle so that we don't have to like fully unhook the line and slide a whole tube all the way down, like a hundred feet of it. We'll just wrap it around and um, close it with some zip tape. love this stuff. It is like the best tape ever. Okay. All right, that ought to help at least a little bit. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't come undone or scoot down or anything like that. She's too excited right now. <laughs> Maybe later. Let me show them what she did this morning. While we were out, we got Iko a new bed because, uh, yeah. Iko has never eaten up anything before. She's never destroyed anything. She's just not one of those destructive dogs. But this morning, all that changed. I don't know what happened, but she was crazy. She was just a crazy girl and tore up her bed. So we got her a Carhartt bed. I think it'll be a lot harder to eat. Yeah, I dare you. Go ahead, try it. Try it, give it your worst. I got that Carhartt tough now. I say while wearing my Carhartt hat and jacket, if anybody has an in at Carhartt, we would put a sponsorship to good use. What is with you today? You're just on a destructive streak. Why don't you take it out on Sheepy? You still ain't torn Sheepy up. I had to go around our little cove back here and pick up all the foam that flew out this morning. She back, come on. You can bring Sheepy. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I know, right? <laughs> like, just the right size for you. <sighs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to my unprofessional cooking show entitled why not? On today's show, we'll be making sushi at home for the very first time ever without any fish and without a bamboo rolling mat. Because why not? Actually, you know what? I think we do have a little bit of fish. We have some smoked trout in the fridge. Baby, do you think we can make sushi with smoked trout? I don't know. 
know if trout is That's not supposed to go in sushi. Well, yeah, our buddy used to make one he called the Carolina roll and he used trout in it, but that's... There you have it. Why not? How old's that trout? Sure. There's time. a pretty good reason why not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got this older couple that comes to the marina and fishes every year for trout. They are in their 90s. They fished the Bering Sea commercially when they were younger, but now they're here. They are something else. But they go out and they catch a lot of trout. We catch a lot of trout. We give all of them to them. And she smokes them and cans them. It's like a three day process. And we eat on them for months, but it is some amazing stuff. It's almost like trout jerky. But we are low, we are out, so maybe it's time to get some more trout and call Rosie and Jim and see what they're doing. And Rosie will not teach us how to smoke the trout ourselves because she says that if she teaches us, then we won't need her. But we're like, Rosie, how do I say this? You're 92. Write it down. Trying to figure out if yep. the smooth side or the rough side of the nori goes down. Looks like the smooth side goes down. Uh, Red, you're supposed to put rice vinegar. Not sure how much. Let's go with that. My first attempt, it doesn't look too bad anyways. I'll let Brandon be the judge of how it tastes. Okay, baby. Give it a go. I don't have chopsticks for you, sorry. Not too shabby. Feels very wrong eating this with a fork, but besides that, pretty good. You know, a little cream cheese would have gone a long way in that. Your first attempt at sushi was fantastic, okay? Wow! Great. There you have it. Why not?